Hi, uh, we are the Waves Capstone team, uh, and we will be presenting on our findings and what we got done uh, in this academic year. So I am Davey Robeck. I am Ernesto Zarita. I'm Caitlin Gores. I'm Rachel Anderson. And I'm Jeremiah Erickson. This capstone continues work started by Davey and I on a research project in the summer of 2019 with Dr. Poor and Dr. Dylan. We were observing the impact of waves caused by wake surfing boats within the Newburgh Pool portion of the Willamette River. This video shows the movement of a dock when a wake surfing boat went by, and as you can see, it causes quite a bit of movement on the dock. These waves impact structures in the water like docks, as well as can cause erosion along the riverbank. The observation of these waves led to the creation of this capstone to try and find a solution. So, as Rachel showed us, this is a serious issue, and our homeowners need some way to properly reduce erosion. Uh, this picture is an example of the utter undercutting erosion that we saw in our testing site in the Newburgh Pool um, to give a visual to the effect of, effects of erosion. Um, this project affects many individuals, and thus it is important to identify the stakeholders. Uh, which include recreational boaters, environmentalists, fishermen, homeowners within, with property along the river, and really anyone who benefits in some fashion uh, from the river, not previously mentioned. And the main groups for our project are the homeowners and the boaters. Um, our project location encompasses the Willamette River with a primary stu or preliminary study in the Newburgh Pool. Uh, the purpose of this project is to help the concerned homeowners mitigate the erosion of their property that lies along the Willamette. Uh, bring, which brings us to our problem statement. Our problem statement is to design and implement a wave attenuation device to dissipate at least 50% of the incoming wave energy produced by recreational boats on the Willamette River. The concern of the project is wave energy, which can be broken down into three components for ranking criteria. First, wave attenuation, so dissipating wave energy. Second being energy capture, so harnessing energy from the waves. And then third is the homeowner's next available option, which can be either putting riprap or fallen trees or other debris into the water to protect their property. Reducing erosion via energy attenuation is the top criteria, as that is why homeowners have contacted us to help with their problem. Second would be adhering to environmental regulations because the local legislature and policies for what can be put in the water are strict and must be followed. Mobility is third due to seasonal tides and potential dangers to boating. Our designs are intended to be built by the homeowners, so simplicity is also important. And rounding out our top five criteria would be cost as we want our solution to be affordable for the homeowners. Now you can see energy capture is the least important criteria as capturing wave energy would not necessarily prevent erosion or reduce the effects of the waves on the homeowner's property. So it's more of an added benefit if we can incorporate it with the other criteria. I'm going to be talking a little bit about our project timeline. Here's the fall schedule. We started off this project with about a month of research to understand the problem of erosion and our potential solutions. We then came up with a few designs, budgeted, and ordered materials. Then we assembled and tested the circuitry for the wave energy device and assembled the initial attenuator prototypes. Now here's our project timeline for this semester. We spent around a month coming up with a procedure to use for testing our attenuator prototypes. We then moved into testing these prototypes and analyzing their effectiveness with our MATLAB code. Using our analyses, we spent over a month honing in our procedure and making changes to our attenuators. We also spent a few weeks analyzing our system using vibrations and creating an alternative wave energy measuring device. Then we finished off with our final data collection and analyses. You may be asking yourself, what is a wave attenuator? A wave attenuator is a structure or device that reduces the energy carried by waves that would otherwise cause erosion or damage to property. Wave attenuators come in two forms. They can either be a rigid structure that is placed in the water, such that it acts as a wall or barrier, or they can be an object that is placed in the water such that it floats and interacts with surface waves. Wave attenuators reduce wave energy through two main methods. First is a change in momentum, 
where the attenuator forces fluid particles to change their direction in a manner such that waves that get passed through the attenuator carry less momentum. The second way takes advantage of drag forces, where the viscous interaction between the wave attenuator and the fluid particles transform wave energy to dissipated heat. A good wave attenuator takes advantage of both methods in a manner that meets the application requirements. When deciding on our initial prototype design for last semester, we agreed that we wanted to go for a more sustainable and eco-friendly route. If our ultimate goal is to protect the river, it made the most sense to use natural materials that won't pollute the river any further than it already is. We came up with two different initial prototype options. One is our more sustainable option that is bound by jute netting, which is very commonly used for erosion. It is strong, yet biodegradable. For this prototype, we bound three logs together with the jute netting. The jute is wrapped around the logs in two layers and secured with gardener staples. There is marine grade rope fastened between the logs to secure the attenuator for testing. Our other initial prototype was very similar, except it was bound together with coated galvanized steel cable. Gardener staples were also used to secure the cable, as well as marine grade rope. This semester, we worked to find the most efficient version of our attenuators. We found that our initial prototypes connected by rope were extremely heavy and hard to transport. We wanted to make the attenuators more mobile for future use by homeowners, and also wanted to make them more easily customizable so that any length could be created by adding or removing attenuators. We did this by connecting the attenuators using eye hooks and carabiners. These carabiner connections are shown in both of these photos. This semester, we tested our initial prototypes as well as both the jute and cable attenuators with our new carabiner connections. In order to test and compare our prototypes, we needed a procedure where we could make consistent waves as well as measure the wave before and after being attenuated. After many iterations, we came to the procedure seen here. Our attenuator was secured to two dog pilings at River Campus and two cameras that were attached to these pilings. These cameras pointed at two PVC pipes on either side of the attenuator. These pipes both had a wave energy buoy attached. Our MATLAB code tracked these buoys to measure the energy of waves before and after attenuation. In order to make waves, Davy and I were in a kayak anchored 10 feet away from the attenuators. We rocked the kayak back and forth as seen in this video. This is the energy equation we use to calculate the average wave energy. With our goal to reduce the wave energy, we are looking to reduce height and period, but mostly focused on height due to its larger impact since it is a squared value within the equation. We found the wave energy by analyzing the videos in MATLAB. The image on the left shows how the MATLAB code tracks the wave. The crop view in the top right corner is observing the brightest spot along the green line and marking it with a red circle this is how we were able to track the buoy in the water. The brightness of each pixel for a specific frame can be seen in the graph below it. The graph in the bottom left is a collection of the brightest points for each frame in the video. The image on the right is the output graph, which uses conversion ratios and changes the pixel height per frame into the graph you see here, which is the height in meters over time. In addition, the MATLAB would produce four different output variables, including maximum amplitude, average amplitude, average period, and average wave energy. The video processing method of measuring wave characteristics has its limitations, especially since it outputs data on a conservative low end. That is why the team came up with the concept of a wave energy measuring buoy. This device consists of a three-axis accelerometer, a Raspberry Pi, and a 5 volt battery pack. A buoy was designed and 3D printed in a manner such that the accelerometer fits snugly in a cavity on the buoy and is constrained to a single axis of motion. The buoy's motion is then constrained by being concentric to the pipe that is used for testing in the video processing method. A sealed plastic food container was modified to house the electrical components with the exception of the accelerometer. To keep water out, marine grade sealant was applied and desiccant was used to protect the equipment. The results found that with no attenuator present, there was an average wave energy dissipation of 27.8% and that the most effective attenuating combination was the jute netting with rope, which averaged 82% wave energy attenuation. 
This is a difference of 54.2% increase between the no attenuator and the jute with rope. The jute is the more effective wave attenuator as it has a higher wave dissipation for both the carabiner and rope when compared to the steel cable. Similarly, the rope is seen as the more effective connector as when it is compared to the carabiner connectors, it has the higher wave attenuating values for both the jute and the steel cable attenuators. All the attenuator test data was analyzed using the video processing method. However, some tests were made to compare the outputted height values given by the accelerometer method versus using the video processing method. Comparing to two data sets, we found that there were differences, sometimes of up to one inch in height. But when we connect lines between the two data sets, we find that both methods are in general agreement with a trend of successive relative heights in a given run for wave. There are different reasons to account for why there's disagreement between the two methods. With the video processing method, the data analyzed is on the conservative end, as wave heights are in on minimum. With the wave energy device, we find that the accelerometer could be a source of problem in its quantization error, or in the way in it's integrated and filtered. If we had more time, the team would have established a more formal procedure to be able to test this out, to figure out the, the nuts and bolts out of this process and see where we can find agreement. Another method to determine the effectiveness of the prototypes is through frequency response models. By modeling the system characteristics of each attenuator, the response of the attenuators can be modeled for a given frequency from the incoming waves. We use the log decrement analysis to model our attenuators. First, we would displace an attenuator under the water to get the initial conditions. Then, after watching recording of the response of the attenuator, being released from its initial condition, we could estimate the motion values, so its subsequent peaks and the period between its initial displacement and peaks. From there, we use log decrement to determine the system characteristics of the jute and cable attenuators. With the system characteristics of each design determined, we were able to model the displacement and velocity of the jute and cable attenuators. The cable attenuator experienced more heave than the jute attenuator according to the system response plots, which doesn't indicate which design would best attenuate the waves, but it did provide us with confidence in our model as we did observe these trends when testing our attenuators out on the water. Looking at the system characteristics of each attenuator, the jute attenuator has more mass and damping than the cable attenuator. This can be attributed to the jute netting being water absorbent, which helps weigh down the attenuator and keeps it from oscillating with the waves, as shown by the difference in magnification factor between the jute and cable attenuators. This also causes the jute attenuator to act more as a rigid structure wave attenuator, which are more effective at dissipating wave energy than a strictly floating attenuation device. Looking at the frequency response plots, the cable attenuator oscillates at a higher amplitude at its excitation frequency than the jute attenuator. We can also see that the excitation frequency of the cable attenuator is closer to the frequency of oscillation of the waves we were using for testing. From these results, we can conclude that an attenuator that does not oscillate at a frequency near that of the waves would be most ideal for dissipating wave energy, at least for our designs. Having now looked at all our data and results for wave attenuation, which design would work the best? The jute attenuator dissipated 2% more energy than the cable attenuator, and the jute attenuator's frequency response is more ideal for dissipating wave energy than the cable attenuator. So the jute attenuator works the best for wave attenuation. One design criteria for this project was to provide an erosion control solution that would be more affordable than the homeowner's next available option. In this case, it would be riprap. Riprap is just a pile of rocks that is applied to the bank, which can be seen in the lower image on the right. Um, for protecting 15 linear feet of bank, riprap is expected to cost around $650, which includes permits required by the state in order to apply material to the bank. Our attenuators um, come in a range ranging from $100 to $240 to protect 15 linear feet of bank, with the attenuator with rope being the more cheaper option and the cable attenuator with carabiner being the more expensive one at $240. For protecting 150 linear feet of bank, rope wrap is expected to be $4,650. The attenuator costs will range from $990 to $2,475 with the jute attenuator with rope again being the cheaper option at 990 and the cable attenuator with carabiner being at 2475 It is important to note that this cost estimate assumes that attenuator costs will have no permits being required, 
and it also assumes no installation costs. So, you might be asking, how would the attenuators work in the Willamette? Well, due to the different frequency and amplitude of the waves observed during this original research in the summer of 2019, it is unknown if the attenuator prototypes would be able to attenuate these waves effectively. Also, the testing methods differ drastically, meaning the data is different as well. Overall, there are far too many unknowns to definitively state that our prototypes are the solution for the Boke Wake issue. If we had more time, we could set up the prototype in the original locations during the summer and record data. The good news is we did meet our design criteria, uh, the main five that were listed previously. Uh, our prototype did reduce energy and thus it reduced erosion in some manner. It adhered to the environmental regulation as it was floating in the water and therefore it does not require a permit. It is relatively lightweight and thus it is easily mobile and also it can be taken apart with relative ease. It is also simple in design as it is only a few parts that can be put together in about 10 minutes with relatively cheap and easy to obtain parts. And lastly, the prototype is cost effective and it is estimated at about two times less cost than the current riprap method. For future device improvements, we'd like to add fins to keep the device from spinning and also keep which would also keep it from moving backwards. And then as far as future work, uh, obviously we would research more into these Willamette boat wakes that were researched in 2019 and have our prototype try to attenuate those waves. But also we would look into frequency response more and then also how drag affects the prototype. Um, the team, we learned a lot this semester, but the two main important things that we wanted to flesh out in front of you all is that we learned that a clear testing procedure makes life significantly easier, both in setting up each time, but also knowing that the data is similar enough to be compared in data analysis. And then in addition to that, being which is being able to create an experiment from scratch based on what we wanted to gain and learn and understand about a problem, we also learned to create techniques to record and analyze the data we obtained. That was just a preview of our team's year-long journey working with this capstone project. Whether it was team bonding, experiencing nature's positive and negative sides, or having our cars stranded in River Campus thanks to a train. We invite you to learn more about our team's journey and all the work that has accumulated from these two semesters by visiting our website, sites.up.edu backslash Waves Capstone. So, this is the Waves Capstone team and it has been our pleasure presenting today. We will now open it up to questions and would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Farina, Dr. Dillon, Dr. Poor, Dr. Doty, Mr. Galati, Matt Libby, Orspa, and of course, the Shiley School of Engineering. Thank you.